Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to do a review, a long-term review, of my 21-gallon Harbor Freight compressor from Central Pneumatic. So let's pop over there and take a look at the compressor. Okay everybody, so here we are taking a look at the Central Pneumatic compressor from Harbor Freight. This is an oiled compressor and the model number or the item number on this you can look up 61454 or 63635 and it's really easy to find. I mean they advertise this everywhere. It is their main compressor up until now. Now they're coming up with some newer ones but this is their main seller, the best seller. They make a ton of money on this and uh, normally it sells for about 175 but they put it on sale all the time normally you can get it on sale for 160 something 150 something but the best price I've seen it is 149 that is the best price at parking lot sales or anything else that's the best price right there don't bother looking for it lower because it won't go down any lower I mean maybe now maybe they'll put it a little lower considering they have their other better compressors coming out but that's just a guess on my part I'm not not really sure if that's ever gonna happen so 149 is the best price I've ever seen and I've had this compressor for three years now and uh, I, I kept an eye on the price for a while before I got it to try to get the best one so there you go on that it's a 21 gallon 2.5 horsepower compressor it puts out 125 PSI max. It's a cast iron head. The rest of the motor is aluminum, but the heads are cast iron. Uh, 5.8 CFM at 40 PSI is what it puts out. 4.7 CFM at 90 PSI. It has built-in gauges and quick coupler, which is convenient. Not all compressors bring that. Uh, it's 42 inches high by 23 inches long by 15.7 inches wide and it's 90 pounds in weight it's not lightweight it's fairly heavy one of the things I like about it and the reason I bought it is because as you can see it's upright and it's not really too big of a monster it's a, a good dimension to it it's very convenient I mean I'm limited in my space I'm sure a lot of you guys are I mean for those of you that have huge shops heck I envy you I uh, definitely do not. Mine's very cramped and I have to make use of every inch available to me. So you see how I squeezed it in there and I took off the handle to be able to uh, you know squeeze it into that little spot. That's why some people like uh, welded on handles. I don't. I prefer the little screw on handle because it's very very convenient. I just slip it right in there, take off the handle and I'm good to go. So I've had this compressor for three years now and it's been a good compressor for me. I've never had a problem with it hasn't given me any real headaches you just maintain it drain the tank change the oil and I've used it for everything now I'm not a mechanic obviously I, I, I don't have a garage I don't use it on a daily basis but I use it for many different projects whether it's carpentry or automotive work or whatever it is and I fill it up I drain it I refill it I redrain it and it hasn't given me any trouble the switches have uh, the switch on it has not failed the gauges have been fairly accurate I've compared it with other gauges and they seem fairly accurate uh, the motor itself never gives me any trouble starting up or anything uh, it does get hot so I would say don't put it next to anything flammable or uh, that can melt being too close to the heat but uh, aside from that you know your your typical precautions it's a good compressor so after three years of use I can say it's definitely good quality I've seen a lot of other people complain, well not a lot, but I've seen some other people complain on the internet. They've had trouble with it and so forth. I really have not. Um, I'm going to take you in and I'm going to show you a couple of the uh, trouble spots and uh, give you my opinion on that. Hold on. Okay, so here we have a bird's eye view of the compressor. And like I said, I've seen on the internet people complain about the switch being faulty. I have not experienced that at all. Works every time I turn it on. This gauge up here, I think I saw maybe one or two people complain that this little vent goes bad on them. What this is, it's a little vent that it opens up when you first turn on the compressor so that the motor, uh, it, it's, it's a, what do you call it, a pressure release. So that the motor is able to uh, spool up or power up without having a lot of pressure holding it back. 
So it's a pressure release valve is what it is. So I've seen some people complain about this. I have not had any trouble with it. So that releases pressure when you turn on the compressor so that the valves can, you know, spin up to proper speed and then it closes later and then you build up pressure. So since I uh, saw that as a possible problem, what I do, my solution, uh, I mean, it may matter, it may not, I don't know. But what I do is when I turn on the compressor, I open the drain valve here at the bottom and I just let it uh, spool up without pressure in the tank. I'll give it five, ten seconds, and then I close it, and then it, you know, fills up properly. So it's just my little way of putting less stress on the motor. Whether that helps, whether it's important or anything, I really don't know, but it's just my way of doing it. And uh, after three years, like I said, I have no real issues with it. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take it out of that tight little corner, and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to do maintenance on this, which the maintenance comprises of just changing the oil. Because it is an oiled compressor, which means a longer life. If you get an oil-less compressor, you never have to do this. But on this particular model, it is oiled. So you have to change the, compre the uh, oil every so often. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let me pull it out of there, and we'll change the, uh, the oil on it. Hold on. So I just wanted to show you there, before I take it out, as you can see, with the handle, it takes up a lot more room. So getting rid of the handle really frees up a lot of room next to the compressor. Uh, may not be important to some of you people, but for me, it certainly is. And it comes with a quick disconnect, which makes it easy for moving it around. You just disconnect it, put your hose off to the side, which I have that hose hooked up to the reel right over here. So take that off. I'll just wiggle it around a few plate, uh, times and get it out here where we can look at it more closely. So let me do that. Okay, so here we are looking at the side of the motor, and this is where the oil drain takes place. Now, this right here is your filler cap. We're going to unscrew that to fill the oil. That right there is your drain plug, simple Phillips screw. You drain the oil out through there. And that there is your visor glass. You, I'm going to have to put a lot of light on here for you to be able to see it, but that is where it shows the oil level. You can see it right there. I know I'm blasting out a lot of stuff here, but you can see the oil level. And it's supposed to be right between that red mark. So halfway be between that red circle is the proper fill level. So you can see it there. Okay, so I already ran the motor for a few minutes to warm up the oil and get any particulates you know, in suspension, and I'm going to drain that out right now. So get yourself a little container, and just be ready to undo this, let it drip out. See if I should not make a mess. I've done this before, and it's very, the only trouble is catching this little Phillips head screw and not dropping it in the oil. That's the only problem. That's the only hard part. So, I don't know how remember how far out it comes. Uh, uh, oh, there we go. And as you see, the oil drips out little by little. Green oil. And it's going to take a little while. So, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm showing you how easy it is to drain. You can see right there how the oil is draining out of there. So, it'll take a little while. It's a very slow... Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> I might speed it up. Yeah. Hold on there. I would speed it up if I opened up the filler valve up here. It'll probably speed it up a little bit, but not by much. As you can see, it still goes out very, very slowly. So that'll take a few minutes to drain out. I'm not going to film it all because that would be very, very boring. So I'll bring you back as soon as it's done. Okay, so here we are. It took me a good 10 minutes to drain that out of there. And uh, it's very slow, thick. It's like molasses. So expect to take about 10 minutes to drain it out. And there you can see a better look at the motor. This part here is cast iron. This is aluminum. So aluminum, cast iron, aluminum. So when they refer to the motor as being cast iron, it's only this part right here. But, you know, who cares? It does a good job. 
Uh, I've been three years already, never giving me any trouble, so I think it's good enough. Whatever they decided to do to it, it's a good enough combo. And as you can see, I tilt it to get the oil out, so all the oil, the dirty water drains out of the bottom of the tank. So I do recommend tilting it. If you can't do it by yourself, have somebody help you, but that makes all the oil and the particulates come out of there much, much better. Here's a look at the oil. Kind of gross, huh? Dark, a greenish color. I don't know if it'll come out on the uh, camera very well, but it is a green kind of a color. And I'm going to put it up to the light, hope it doesn't blow everything out. But look at all the, uh, the camera ain't going to help me here. You can see a lot of stuff floating in there, and th that's normal. The inside of the motor is aluminum. You're going to get some particulates floating around. But you can see all the sediment uh, that builds up in there. And, uh, you know, there's not much you can do about it. That's the whole point of replacing the oil on a regular basis. And I know some of you guys are going like, oh, my God, dude, how long has it been since you replaced that thing? It looks disgusting. Well, it's only been maybe six months. It hasn't been that long. And I don't use it on an everyday basis. So six months is, you know, what I'm comfortable with. Now I'm going to fill it up with uh, the oil here. I use the Husky oil just because it's cheaper and uh, I can get it locally. It's cheaper and I get more than Harbor Freight. And honestly, I don't know how good the Harbor Freight oil is. The Husky oil I probably trust a little better. So that's what I fill it up with. I'm going to do that right now. I have the uh, top opened up there. I just see if I can pour it in without making a big old mess. And I don't know if I'll be able to uh, see the fill level. Let me see here. I'm not putting you in frame because I'm trying to look at it across the camera here. So can we see it? Uh, oh, and there I go making a big mess. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I can't look at the camera and look at that all at the same time. So I'm going to fill this up and I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. Okay, so we're all done here. I filled it back up. Everything's back to normal. I cleaned up whatever mess I made and I'm going to put it back in its home. But before I do that, I wanted to point out one thing in case some people may not know. This top part right here, it's not a regular nut or a regular plug. Try not to lose this, try not to break this, or you're going to have to find a new one. This is a vent. It's two parts. It actually has the bottom part and the top part here. And it is a vent. You can see a hole in there. The pressure in the motor ventilates out through here. So you can't just plug that up with a regular nut, or you're going to blow the motor apart. So be careful with this top part here. That is very important. This is obviously a plastic uh, view glass. You don't want to break that either. This is a simple uh, Phillips head uh, screw. So if this breaks or you lose it, you can replace it easily. But this be careful, and this be careful. Do not lose it. Do not break it. Don't over-tighten it. You don't want to try to use pliers on that and ruin it. So be careful. Anyway, I'm going to put this back in its place, and then we'll sign off from there. Okay, so there we are. She's back in her home, nice and comfy, right back where she belongs. We changed the oil on it. I showed you how easy it is to do on this particular model, and now you know how to do it in case you haven't done it yet on yours, if you have purchased one by now. If you haven't, I recommend it. After three years of use, I've had no difficulty with it. At $149, it is a cheap compressor to buy, cheap monetarily. I'm not saying it's cheap quality because I really have not had any problems, so I can't call it cheap at all. Uh, the ones, the other brands out there are a lot more money, a lot more costly, and probably about the same. For an oiled compressor, which is what I wanted, I did not want the oil less. I wanted an oiled compressor. This one has turned out to be pretty darn good. Um, so I say it's a buy. If you want one, if you're thinking about it, if you're looking at it, I think it is a buy. It is a definite good deal. Worked out for me. Hopefully it will work out for you as well. And I didn't do any demonstrations with it because I don't think there's a need for it. You know what a compressor does. You know it runs uh, impact uh, wrenches and impact hammers and nailers and all that kind of good stuff. And this one does it quite well. And if you are subscribed to my channel, you will have already seen me use this compressor in other videos that I produced. And if you're not subscribed, then why aren't you? You should be. Why don't you do that right now? Click that subscribe button so you know about every video that I put out. And if you're curious about this compressor, 
you're going to see me use it in all sorts of projects because it's my main compressor. I use it for everything. So you didn't get a demonstration today, but you will probably next time. Whatever video I do that involves air, this compressor is going to be the star. So hit that subscribe button, click the like button, and ring that bell so you get notified the next time I produce a video. Hope you guys learned something from this. Hope it uh, clarified it for you, whether to buy or not to buy. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for hanging out with me in the shop. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye for now.